Welcome to War Thunder Naval Forces. This video we're going to be going over some of the basics of how to get started in the U.S. Uh, naval and air tree. So if this is your first time playing War Thunder, this is a great place to get started. So in Combined Forces, uh, you'll have, or in Naval Forces, you'll have the option to use both uh, ships and planes together. So uh, in War Thunder, here at, across the bottom, you'll actually be picking what vehicles you want to bring with you into a battle. So uh, before we start picking our vehicles, just going to do a quick run through of what this UI kind of gives you. So here under this uh, to battle section, you'll have an option to pick kind of what mode you want to be in. So if this is your first time, it's a good idea to start with uh, this arcade forces. Uh, or arcade battles. Um, you could pick to be either just airplanes, you could be ground and air, or you can be ships and air. Uh, after you've been doing this for a while, if you get kind of comfortable and you want to raise that difficulty level, you can move over into realistic battles uh, for all three. Uh, and those are a lot more rewarding. You'll actually get more bonuses and stuff, but it's definitely a lot harder. So you'll get uh, like a loss of lead indicators and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and stick to naval uh, arcade battles. Uh, but if we were to start a battle right now, we would only have an airplane available to us. So uh, when you start, you'll have these reserve options. So these are vehicles that cost nothing to repair. Um, so every time you take them into battle, they are free. So if, you, if your vehicle gets destroyed, you respawn for free. Uh, as you kind of move up in the ranks, things will start costing uh, in-game currency, which you earn by, you know, winning matches and uh, defeating other players. Uh, and that'll be this silver lion total up here. But we're not going to worry about that because we are just looking at some of these revert, uh, reserve tiers. So uh, we want to go ahead and add a boat to our lineup. So up here, uh, after you select research here in the top and the bottom left, uh, you can then pull, uh, you can pick the fleet options. Once you pick your fleet options, you should have just a couple of these uh, research, probably just this reserve one. Uh, so vehicles that you haven't researched yet will appear like this. And once you've finished researching them, then they're available to purchase with that, uh, the silver line. So for example, here's a vehicle that uh, I have started researching but haven't finished. Um, so we'll go ahead and actually stick to that. So when you are researching stuff, you wanna to stick to that kind of immediate tier that you're working in, because as you go higher and higher in the tiers, uh, the research from these lower ships will end up being worth less. So for example, if you wanna research rank three, uh, you wanna use at least something that's rank two, otherwise the amount of research points will be cut in half. So we're going to go ahead and stick to this 165-foot uh, PC-451. I'm going to keep researching that one. But let's go ahead and take this, uh, this Higgins boat. So we're going to pick this, and we'll go ahead and take that crew. So for some reason, it decided that we want it to be in air arcade battles, which we definitely don't. So let's go ahead and switch that over to Naval Arcade again. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So when we uh, hop in the queue, the matchmaker will try and factor in what our current level is and what vehicles we have available and try and match us to uh, other players who are waiting. So typically it'll try and connect you to other folks who are uh, nearby but if it needs to, it'll take you a little bit further away. So it looks like there's a lot of folks here who are waiting for the US tech tree. Uh, so there's a good chance we'll be playing against our, uh, our peers. <laughs> so in this map, we are playing in what's called domination. So this is just a kind of a king of the hill thing. So each of these zones are areas that we want to capture. So here you can see that we'll have an opportunity to change what we're bringing with us. Uh, the default options are probably pretty good. Um, we're mostly going to use this universal. So let's just go ahead and 
switch over to that and just take mostly universal. It'll make our lives a little bit easier because then we won't have to pick between ammo types. And let's go ahead and bring some torpedoes because those are going to be useful. Uh, if you haven't researched these yet, you may need to start without them. So if you don't see those as an option, that's okay. Then it looks like there's already some people who have spawned in here. You can see them right there. So let's go ahead and start over this other spawn and we'll go to battle. Gunners are searching for airborne and surface targets. So in the bottom right, you can see that there is the feed that says who has been hit and who has been damaged. So you want to lead your shots a little bit. Once a section is blacked out on an enemy boat, you can just start ignoring it. Uh, and you want to try and get to the other parts. So notice here we're trying to lead our shots a little bit. It looks like they are getting knocked around by that uh, artillery. reloading. We are front and center on this, so we are in trouble here. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> so we torpedoed somebody, but we got taken out in the process. But that is A-OK -okay because we have these additional reserves, so uh, in each of these battles you're allowed to take up to three of uh, the boats and two of the planes. So let's go ahead and take the, uh, the pea shooter. So you'll notice here, we've actually gotten uh, these spawn points. Those spawn points are earned by uh, taking out vehicles. So as we've kind of uh, taken out some of the opponents, we have earned points to be able to spawn in as a plane. So because it looks like our team has already captured one of the zones, we're going to go ahead and kind of uh, use up one of our air spawns because you typically can't capture a, uh, a ground area with a, or a, uh, with a plane. So let's try and avoid some of those bigger ships. And let's try and harass this guy here. Oh, it looks like we're missing our rudder. That is terribly unfortunate. That is going to make this a little bit harder. As you can see, without a rudder, we are not doing particularly well. It's terribly unfortunate. But, thankfully, we have more of these reserve boats. So, this time we're not going to specify which spawn point, we're just going to hop into one. So, uh, to control our speed, we're using uh, W and S, because we're on a mouse and keyboard for all of this. It looks like Charlie right in front of us is empty. We probably will end up encountering some people when we get in there. But, gotta get in there. So, with Q, we're able to load up our torpedoes. So, we're gonna go ahead and throw something in there kind of preemptively. Oh, and now, actually. There we go. Just toss that in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and deploy some smoke to try and keep from being front and center on everyone's attention here. We got hit, so let's go ahead and uh, prevent that from sinking us. So you can see in the bottom, our damage uh, shows what we can or can't repair. Oof, that's a strong hit right there. That's actually the vehicle that we are trying to research
turns out he is going to wreck us. Because he has a much bigger gun than we do. <laughs> so, fires are important to put out because fires are uh, going to destroy or kill your, uh, your crew members, which are, turns out, pretty important. So, you definitely want to put those out soon. After that, the next biggest priority is your... Is your, uh... Nice. Whoop. <laughs> How about that? Uh, so sinking is a very important thing, or uh, an important thing that you want to try and prevent. So when you do see that option in that bottom, the, the, the porthole with the water, you definitely want to try and address that. So, so here we can see we've got our lead indicator. So let's see if we can get some hits. Nice. Fortunately, I think we I stole that guy's kill. like most of their vehicles are out so managed to get pretty good control of the uh, the ground or the uh, sea so now great because that means that we've actually probably got this in the bag. So we've got a warning that uh, we're low on, on a low course so you definitely want to move out of the way. So it looks like we're actually you now just kind of waiting for the timer to kick down. So. Did pretty well. Um, helps that we had a strong team with us. Looks like we're gonna get a last minute buzz from an enemy player. And a low flyby from a friendly bomber. After the battle, we'll have this uh, results summary screen where we'll get to see some of the uh, rewards from the battle. So we earned uh, about 2,000 research points. We earned some silver lions. Since we don't have to pay for any uh, vehicle repairs, that is fantastic. Um, unfortunately, here you can see that we were researching a very high level uh, air vehicle. I should have probably changed that around to something smaller or uh, lower tier. Uh, <laughs> So instead, we only got 94 research points, which is not great. Uh, but we did manage to get you know, a good amount of progress on this PC-451, which is pretty cool. Also, we managed to research artillery support for the Higgins boat, which is pretty important. So here, now that we've uh, kind of finished that screen right there, it's going to take us to this screen where we're going to get to uh, distribute the um, the research points to what are called modifications. So when you have a brand new vehicle, it will be what's called stock. When it's stock, none of these uh, modifications are researched. They're each tier locked behind the previous one. So uh, in order to get this artillery support, we need to have a certain number of the previous tier research. Uh, we definitely want this, and it's only gonna cost us 30 silver lines, so we're definitely going to take that. So, yep, thank you. And then we're going to take the last of our research points and put them into these depth charges. And then we're also going to get an extra 108 research points uh, because we finished this last tier, which is actually pretty cool. So, bam. And so now you can see that this boat has this uh, spade icon behind it. That means that we've researched all of the possible modifications. 
So when we go uh, into a battle with this boat, we're going to be bringing effectively the best form of this boat. So if you look at the top, you can see that there's that blue title that describes the type of vehicle this is. And then below that, it says the battle rating that it's at. So the battle rating is what's used to kind of balance all of these vehicles together. So as you move up in the ranks here, uh, what you'll find is that each of these tiers are grouped together by the matchmaker to be within uh, one battle rating up or down of each other. So if you're in a reserve vehicle, what you might have noticed is that we were facing what was up to this PC451, which is a 2.0 battle rating. So that vehicle that we uh, were that we managed to, to beat up on, because uh, there were multiple ships attacking it, uh, was a whole battle rating higher than us, which means that it was the most powerful ship that we could have faced. Uh, as you start looking at some of these stronger, higher tier vehicles, you'll notice that, uh, for example, this Elko 80 foot 314 is too high to face our reserve vehicle, which is at 1.0. So as you go up, what you'll find is that the repair costs start going up, but also the modifiers, the reward modifiers go up. So effectively, it's more expensive to field them, but the reward for fielding them is bigger. So in practice, what this means is that these middle areas are actually more fun and a lot more affordable to actually play. So uh, sticking around here is actually a great place to be. So uh, as you might have noticed, if we're constantly bringing these weaker vehicles, this you know reserve PT6 boat, uh, we may start running into some problems where everybody else is much stronger than we are and we're bringing really kind of the, you know, the weakest of the bunch. So it actually really helps to start building what's called a lineup. So here in War Thunder you have these options for presets. So uh, over here in the, the bottom you can uh, either design a new preset. So we'll say we created this new one. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and create uh, so we'll go ahead and stick to this PT Boats one here. So here you can see that we've got uh, everything at three point, I'll go ahead and nix this one for now. Send them away. We'll say that this sticks to 3.0 and lower. So here we've got this uh, 565. Go ahead and put it here. So you'll notice uh, when you pick a vehicle to go to uh, a crew slot that hasn't been to before, it'll cost you something in Silver Lines. So we'll go ahead and put them there, we'll train them. Uh, and now we've got three different PT boats, um, again, all at 3.0 and lower, um, along with some air vehicles. So actually, I realized that this uh, PT-59 is actually a great pick. So let's go ahead and swap that back out for the uh, 565. So what you'll find is that each of these vehicles have different perks. So the PT-59 uh, is a torpedo-less motor gunboat. Uh, and while it doesn't have any of the, uh, the torpedoes on board, it has a very strong 40-millimeter uh, Bofors. So this 40 mil on the front is pretty devastating. It also has a lot of machine guns on the side and then another one of these 40s on the, the back. So while this platform isn't great for tackling the biggest of the big, i.e. the destroyers that you might face, it's absolutely great for both anti-air and for taking on smaller PT boats. So if you're in a PT boat, like another boat, this is, this is probably your worst nightmare. You do not want to come up against this one. So we have gone ahead and picked this one. So we now have three different PT boats and then one airplane. Since we can put more than one airplane, we might as well put in something else at 3.0-ish. So here we've got this A36, uh, but if we can, it might actually be nice to have uh, a torpedo 
bomber in here somewhere. So here we can see the TBF-1C Avenger is at 2.0. It's a little low, um, but I think that might be, yeah, unless we want to go up to 3.3, which I don't think we actually want to do. So let's go ahead and stick to 3.0. Go ahead and add in this TBF, put it there. We've already researched, or we've already crewed it before. So there we go. So now we've got two airplanes and then three, um, three PT boats. So now we can take this out, get into the queue, and we'll go for another game. So that's it for this video. I know it was a little long, but uh, I hope that this taught you something about how to get started with uh, naval forces and some of the ins and outs of kind of setting up a lineup. So if you've got any questions about how to build a lineup, feel free to leave them in the comments and uh, take a look at them. So, thanks for watching and good luck and have fun.